couple quick things to talk about today before I get into the main section of the video. The first one is that we have this screenshot on how many customers Palantir has on their AWS platform or partners, I should say. 20 plus, we did have someone down here on Reddit mentioning that they actually saw 20 plus this label back in March of 2021. So it's likely more than 20 at this point between a range, maybe 20 and 50. Not too much activity, I guess you could say, in about the last year, but still a pretty strong number, and it is uh, relatively subjective at this point as to what that means. But now I wanted to kick us into this announcement that Palantir just made, which is they're introducing a certification program to scale platform and empower customers and strategic partners. So I'll just highlight these quick bullets up here they're going to provide an opportunity for users to highlight their foundry foundry knowledge skills and abilities while their employers will be able to accelerate their transformation by identifying and scaling foundry users so this is great because a certification essentially creates some demand for the product palantir customers will be able to increase the impact of palantir software by leveraging more of their it and data uh, support network in the foundry operating system and palantir aims to infuse operations with intelligence by setting standards for using data to help transform organizations rather than just modernizing them. With its certification program, Palantir is accelerating and expanding the productization of its approach. So just wants to mention that. And then one more thing down here, Foundry certifications are now available to existing Foundry customers and partners only. So this is not something that you can just apply for online. You have to be a customer and exams are available in one of four tracks data engineer, application developer, data science, and data analyst. Exam guides, and then basically they talk about that. It's essentially powered through this company called Amplify, and that is how the exams are done, and the certification too. So here we have Sachin saying, the Foundry certification is a step in the right direction to reduce four deployed engineer requirements because we know there's, those are very high and very stringent requirements. You have to essentially be a software engineer even further at client sites and let clients scale Foundry further. So this is a very good take, I think, by Sachin because he's saying the next focus should be on open certification and self-serving platform, find it easy to buy things they know how to operate. So essentially decreasing the barrier to entry for Palantir's Foundry product, where you could actually bring the forward deployed engineer essentially in-house if you have the expertise to do so, lowering the cost of purchasing and using or subscribing to the license of Foundry. So wanted to mention that. Now I've got something else, and this is the main point of the video, which I've seen no one talking about this or mentioning it at all. And Palantir has launched this new operating system for EV infrastructure in partnership with Weijo. So I wanted to run through this white paper and explain sort of what's going on here because I think this is, as someone interested in EVs and sort of the market in general, it is a very interesting. So they're announcing this new operating system for EV charging networks. They say the EV infrastructure operating system offers any business or organization the ability to build, scale, and operate first-class EV charging infrastructure for the coming mobility revolution. It integrates an organization's data through Palantir Foundry for operational decision-making with the option to add Weijo. Now, recall that Weijo is a SPAC that Palantir is partnered with, and they are a connected vehicle data company. An option to add on their data a robust connected vehicle data asset that you can essentially get access to. I'm sure you have to pay for it. At some point, there is an option to leverage the data there as well. The EV infrastructure operating system can help build profitable, efficient, and sustainable EV networks and ensure equitable and universal access to EV charging in the future. Now, of course, I want to mention there is no mention of Tesla in this white paper. I would not expect there to be. Tesla is certainly doing their own thing, but for everything other than Tesla, this really does seem like a good solution. Now, you may know that Tesla is working on opening up their charging network, but it is also worth noting that that will be run through themselves. If you want to charge a non-Tesla electric vehicle at a Tesla charging site, you're going to have to need the Tesla app 
and you won't be able to see all of the data from another third party. I think that's really the difference here with what Palantir is saying. We can bring all the data together. We'll get to that in a moment from all these varying different sources, which is what they are good at. And they're trying to address this problem of global electrification. So they just mentioned how new legislation around the world is accelerating the transition to EVs with billions in infrastructure grants and tax incentives on the line. Universal access to EV charging remains the biggest impediment to widespread EV adoption. Palantir has unveiled the EV infrastructure operating system to help break down the barriers that stand before the wider adoption of EVs and ensure that future investments in EV infrastructure are equitable, efficient, and sustainable. An integrated solution for charger site selection and charger network management. The platform enables users to layer additional data relevant to their business or organization, ensuring that any organization's context for site selection and charger operations is accounted for so now let's get into what is actually in this so we have what they describe as a fusion of robust data powerful analytics and operational workflows they have the intelligent site selection so that's basically where are we going to charge what are the sites doing how do we maximize ev charging access basically all of these questions you can ask how do we best utilize the charging infrastructure how do we assess the demand and the potential charging speed and on-site battery storage and then we're on to this other section called maintenance and reliability is how can operational charger uptime be maximized to serve as many customers as possible all the sorts of these questions about reliability and outages. The EV Infrastructure OS integrates an organization's proprietary data augmented with the option to select connected vehicle data from Weijo to enable mobility players to intelligently build and maintain EV charger networks. The application enables companies to answer critical questions for network builders and operators such as those shown on the right. So really these are great questions. They're hard ones to get answers to. So if Palantir is able to point someone or anyone using this software in the right direction of answering these questions because it's more how can we best maximize the usage of this site while keeping them up and reliable. So let's talk about some use cases. The EV infrastructure OS's built-in site selection tools give operators the ability to intelligently plan and build new charge stations. The site selection workflow can help customers locate sites for chargers in areas where EV charging demand is greatest. It enables users to optimize their site selection for charger utilization and can also help determine the size type and kilowatt capacity per charger, kilowatt hour capacity per charger. For customers opting to leverage Weijo, okay, so we're getting a little more information on this optional selection because remember, this whole operating system is in partnership with Weijo. So they offer a vast data asset with billions of near real-time connected vehicle data points, including aggregated vehicle journey paths, vehicle powertrain and fuel types, as well as movement patterns of conventional and electric vehicles. So the operating system gives users a full picture of demand and customer potential. So it remains to be seen, I don't believe Weijo is with entirely electric vehicles, so I'd imagine some of their data is not super helpful in that regard, but no doubt there is a lot to pull from. So here we have basically a screenshot of the operating system, and I'll show you some more below, but just to get a sense of what it actually looks like. Very much a Foundry product in the different elements that are available and how it looks. Low code, no code environment. We'll get to that in just a moment. So the application can serve as a foundation for future development to uncover new workflows and to generate additional value. The platform easily integrates with additional third-party data, no doubt pulling upon Palantir's existing software and technology to aggregate siloed data. For example, a retailer can prioritize stores that have high or low average basket values, whereas utility companies can use it to understand how forecasted EV charging demand would impact their wider grid networks. Automakers can use the tool to build and monitor EV charging infrastructure in key markets following new vehicle rollouts. So this paragraph right here really makes it seem like this is the Skywise for EV charging. And why do I say that? Well, Skywise is the partnership with Airbus for the operating system for airlines in that it aggregates the manufacturers and then down to the actual airlines themselves. So we have this, we have automakers and we have utility companies, everyone that you could possibly think of that would benefit from having this data is put into the loop and can 
use this operating system as they call it. A holistic view of which kind of demand can be expected both today and in the future is critical for optimal long-term investment decisions and can deliver compounding value. So here we have another screenshot of how things look. Let me just zoom in so you can see that right away. And basically we have these graphs here showing the network uptime and that we have the fleet uptime here. Getting a visual interpretation as the percent unit operational on the y-axis here and then over time on the x-axis and then we're getting alerts down here at the bottom at which charging location they are being alerted at and we have the priority is this a high priority alert has this alert been dealt with and what time did it happen at so and then you get the corresponding graph of the alerts in the pipeline so the apps network operations tools help maximize revenue and increase network reliability okay users can manage large networks of chargers at scale with operational tools built right from chargers iot sensor data they can monitor and improve the performance of individual chargers by tracking uptime via the open charge point protocol sensor data and reveal the historical performance of each owned or publicly available charging station its daily utilization and electricity costs where data is available so here we have another example of the software itself saying that network operations teams can build alerts to identify faulty behavior using low code or no code environments enabling timely investigation of charger faults by integrating sensor data with ERP enterprise resource planning systems and maintenance databases so if we just zoom in here again we can see basically this is the map will say oh there's a charger here let's check on the charging status the how the fans are doing the temperature the uptime and on this charger it looks like there are five charge points and it's a municipal government facility in New York City it gives us the coordinates the application can identify faulty chargers by flagging when vehicles visited a charger but were not matched with corresponding charging transactions so that basically means it can proactively let the whoever's in charge of the servicing know that for instance if a charger if someone pulls up with an ev and tries to charge but it doesn't work if there's not a transaction that occurs that pretty much means that there's something wrong with the charger so it's probably going to get weighted by importance or as we saw up here priority and it will be dealt with in that way all these features lead to faster problem resolution reducing downtime and maximizing revenue per charger. So when you talk about revenue per charger, increasing profitability, that really is the power of Palantir's platforms. They're adapting what they've already built out with Foundry to this new operating system for a specific use case. So if they're able to deliver value as they say they can, that means their product itself has value. And that's where their profitability and their revenue generation can come from deploying these projects. So across industry, public-private effort is needed to ensure the success of this transition to electric. The EV infrastructure OS is built to serve any kind of company and organization looking to have a stake in this future. As I mentioned, the application goes even further by building a bridge between charge point operators, software makers, site owners, utilities, and city authorities establishing a foundation for shared collaboration and network growth so really i think this has never been done before in the way that it's bringing all of these players together very much in a skywise-esque manner a platform that we are talking about with cyberfam is really much more of an ecosystem than just traditional SaaS ecosystem as a service network as a service this is what differentiates palantir so let's wrap this up Palantir's first-class security practices ensure control over data owned, proper data handling, and data anonymization. And then we have this description of the data, as they had already mentioned, but a visual here. So we have the third-party data that could be a car manufacturer or automaker, and then proprietary data that could be the charters, the company themselves, and then the optional to add in Weijo, which probably gives you more data, but on the other hand, also likely has a cost associated but really ties it all together because i think they have the both of these sides data on both of these things the iot and other third party stuff as well open source data that they can pull in and the sensor fusion data that they have as well that all brings it into this new operating system 
that Palantir has just launched. So there you have it, Palantir talking about shaping the future of EV charging. So it remains to be seen when this is actually going to be started and used by an automaker or a charge charger site charger manufacturer but i think this is very exciting something that really shows the power of palantir's technology and what it can actually be used for so happy to pass it along happy to share it with you i can't wait to hear more about this and when it actually gets going with a potential client or customer but until then we will have to see if palantir mentions this on their earnings call in about a month until next time